LSUodyssey.com here. Yet another Tigers DBU transfer. <laughs> I mean, how many how many more DBs are LSU going to look for in the transfer portal? Uh, this is pretty stunning stuff, uh, in my opinion. Colby Richardson from McNeese, someone who played under uh, Frank Wilson, LSU's current uh, running backs coach. And uh, recruiting coordinator, of course. And uh, Colby Richardson has been playing since 2018, playing college football since 2018. He signed with McNeese clear back in 2017. New Orleans native, played at McMain. That was where he uh, made his name at McMain. <laughs> and um, you know it, he's been he's been around college football for a while here. Quite a while. Sat out the 2019 season. I'm trying to remember if it was an injury or what. Um, someone who gave me this scoop of everything kind of threw it all at me. It rolled all up in a ball and it was mushed together, but very, very good information. Kind of like, whoa, another DB transfer. Wow, I thought Seven Banks was might be the final one, but then I was like, you know they're probably just going to load up at DB as well. And so it was kind of like, okay, there'll probably be another DB, maybe another O-lineman, and then, of course, a tight end, which you know everyone has known LSU's been looking for. I think they got that tight end help with a walk-on, uh, Frazier. Uh, I'm not... I'm, I think he might be related to Miles Frazier. I can't remember off the top of my head, but someone who could be very helpful in supplementing Cole Taylor, Jack Mashburn at tight end, um, Nick Stores as well at tight end. You know, that, that group is just very, you know, it's very anonymous group. And since we're so receiver heavy this season, it wouldn't really make any sense to just, uh, you know, use a bunch of tight ends this year when the strength of the team is at receiver. You know, having one less receiver out there just to where you have a tight end run offense, okay, but if you're not passing to them anyway, they don't serve a huge blocking purpose if the ball is out of the hand in three seconds anyway. Just something I kind of thought of. But anyway, LSU needed corners. We needed help at at DB so obviously coming into this season. When you look and see all the names that left LSU football at the DB position, it is staggering. Derek Stingley Jr., of course, went to the draft, which we all knew was going to happen. We all expected. But Eli Ricks shocks the world, transfers from LSU to Alabama, joins the dark side. Shocking. Cordell Flott kind of shocked some people declaring for the draft. I was not shocked because I felt like he's going to want to go with Derek into that same draft class. And he, didn't, he, he was right. He ended up being a third-round pick. You know, basically seen in the, in the same light as Stingley in some, to some degree because of just his association and even being named alongside of him as an LSU corner in the same draft already does so much for your stock. And then looking at what Cordell Flott did last year, a complete 180 from his 2020 season and uh, far improved from his 2019 year. The stats don't truly show what he did. You know, he had a pass breakup that directly, uh, you know, influenced an interception, but we lose him as well. You know, and then you're thinking, okay, all right, we've lost a lot of these names, but we kind of thought we'd lose some of these guys. Okay, Eli Ricks is always in and out the door. Who knew? Okay, whatever. We've solved that saga. How are LSU going to get that help? Okay, well, we we bring in some some high caliber 2022 freshman DBs. Okay, especially at cornerback, but no, that was not possible. You know, Jalen Davis Robinson is a great name to start with at first. 
you know, bringing in LT Welch is a great name to bring in as well, who I think can really play some significant minutes for LSU, maybe in his first season, maybe in his second season, but I think early. But at the same time, are they physically ready for SEC reps? That has obviously been proven to be a, a, a sign of concern for the LSU coaching staff, considering they then proceeded to go out and get one corner DB after another, and they had to. They absolutely had to, and we knew it. We knew it. And it's shocking how many Louisiana natives they were able to pull as well. I mean, it just shows the power of the, of the LSU brand. You know, wanting to play for your team, wanting to stay home and play for that team. But we just, because of the portal, and because of the newness of the portal, even though LSU has had a lot of help from the portal, as, as much as everyone knows, Joe Burrow, a lot of these names, Liam Shanahan, we had no center in 2020. We had to get a center, got Liam Shanahan, at least kind of, I wouldn't say solidified the position, but at least gave us a reliable guy. LSU is no stranger to the portal and has been a major benefactor and as well as, you know, we've suffered some losses to the portal, of course, as everyone knows. But right now, DBU is built based and completely almost centered around transfers, at least at the cornerback spot. At safety, you got Jay Ward. You got Sage Ryan, you got some of these names, but corner is like legitimately built on transfers. It's it's pretty crazy. It's now been, I, I believe, six, seven transfer corners, and six of the seven are Louisiana natives. Or sorry, maybe seven DBs in total, but either... It's something seven or eight, six, seven or eight. It's crazy. Mackay Garner, Jarek Bernard Converse, Greg Brooks Jr., Joe Fouché, Seven Banks, Deron Branch, and now Colby Richardson. So that is seven corner. Seven corners. Seven transfer corners. I'm sorry, seven transfer DBs. And that's just that's just crazy. Seven transfer DBs, five at corner, six out of seven from the state of Louisiana, returning to the fold. What a story, and we'll see how it all shakes up in 2022, because... Either this shows a great pathway for the future, that you can rebuild your roster through the portal like this, or it's a cautionary tale of, of relying too much on the portal. 